Good morning, everybody. We were discussing with reflection of light from spherical mirrors, and we discussed about different terms related to spherical mirrors previously. For example, what do we know? Like pole of a mirror, center of curvature, radius of curvature, principal focus, aperture of a mirror. All these were discussed, and we also tried to understand. How reflection of light takes place from spherical mirrors, and we talked about some characteristic rays while we are defining them. That if a ray of light is moving parallel to the principal axis of the mirror, then after its reflection, it moves to the principal focus of the mirror. If a ray of light is moving to the focus, then after its reflection, it will move being parallel to the principal axis of the mirror. And if a ray of light is moving through the center of curvature of the mirror, then after its reflection, it will retrace its path. It will move in the opposite direction. And we also know that if a ray of light is incident at the pole, making some angle with the principal axis, then after its reflection, it will move in the opposite direction, making same angle with the principal axis. And using this idea. We can easily discuss about formation of image due to reflection of light from spherical mirrors. We shall take those characteristic rays, and first of all, we shall take about concave mirrors. Suppose we have taken an object at infinity, and if two rays of light are coming from infinity, then we can consider those rays to be parallel, though they are coming from one point. And after the reflection from the mirror, they both are passing through the focus. And therefore, we can understand actually we will have a very small image, and it will be a real image because we know that the reflected rays after the reflection from the mirror they are really moving at a point. Actually, we cannot have an object at infinity; we can have it at a very far distance. Therefore, actually, we will get instead of getting a point image, we can get a very small image, and therefore the characteristics of the image or position we can write the image will be formed at focus. On the same side of the object, it will be real. It is inverted, and it will be very small in size. Now, from infinity, we are coming to a point which is beyond center of curvature of the mirror or beyond place. That is, suppose A B is the object. I have taken two light rays which are coming from the point A. One being parallel to the principal axis of the mirror. After its reflection, it will pass through the focus. And another one, which is meant to pass through the focus, after its reflection, it will move being parallel to the principal axis of the mirror. That is what we see. That these two rays coming from the point A after the reflection are meeting at the point A dash. That is, we can say A dash is an image of the point A. And similarly for all other points, A will be formed, and ultimately we will get an image in A dash image of the object. And what we see. That the image is formed between A and B. It is inverted. It is real, and it is shorter than the object. That means it is diminished in size. Now let us come to the position when the object is at B. Again, we have taken those two rays, one parallel to the principal axis of the mirror. After its reflection, it is moving to the focus of the mirror. Another one is being made to pass through the focus. After its reflection, it will be parallel to the principal axis. Well, axis of the mirror, and we see these two rays coming from the point A. After the reflection from the mirror, are really meeting at the point A dash. So A dash is an image on the point A, and thus we will get an image A dash B dash for the object A B. And it is clearly observed that the image is being formed at B S, and it is inverted image upside down. It is real because the rays are really moving, and it is equal to size as that of the object. When we are coming between A and B, the object is between A and B. A B is the object. One ray has been taken, which is parallel to the principal axis of the mirror. After its reflection, it is moving to the focus of the mirror. Another one that has been made to pass the focus. After its reflection, it is being parallel to the principal axis of the mirror. And those two rays are meeting at the point A dash. And similarly, you can see that A dash B dash will be the image of the object A B. Here, that is the object image is beyond B dash on the 
same side. It is imparted, it is real, and it is enlarged, magnified in this. Now, when the object is placed at F, again we have taken one ray that is parallel to the principal axis. After its replacement, it is moving to the focus. Another one ray here I have taken, which is making some angle theta with the principal axis. Then we know that the reflected ray will also make an angle theta with the principal axis. Angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection, and this is the normal. So we see that these two rays we are parallel after the reflection from the mirror. That means we can consider as if the rays are meeting at infinity. Therefore, the image, image is real. It will be inverted because the image of A will be formed somewhere here. It does. And we will be somewhere less. So it is real, important, and it will be very, very large in size. Now again, if I come back, when the object is between A and B, when the object is placed, that means the object is being placed very close to the concave mirror. Then one ray has been taken, which is parallel to the principal axis of the mirror. We see it is passing through the focus. Another one ray has been taken as theta with the principal axis. The reflected ray will be angle theta and we see these two rays are diverging in nature that is they will never meet each other rather these two rays will appear if one observes from this side as if they are coming from the point A dash and similarly images will be from the other points and we will see an image A dash B dash will be produced here if you differentiate between these two this and this one we can understand here the image is formed at the back of the mirror that means the object is in one side of the mirror, image is on the other side of the mirror. It is a virtual image. Why virtual? Because in all other previous cases, the reflected rays after the reflection from the mirror, they are really meeting at the point. But here, they are not meeting at any point. Rather, they appear as if they come from the point it has. It is direct and it is magnified. That means if you hold the concave mirror in front of your face, very close to your face, you will see a magnified straight image of the back of the mirror and it's a very practical application for concave mirrors if we go to the saloons we shall see that the mirrors that they are using there that is actually a concave mirror because we can say in other cases the images are inverted in all those cases sometimes we have seen the image with small large equal but all the images are inverted but this is a straight image straight image Okay, so from here we can understand about the formation of image due to reflection of light from concave mirrors. Now, I will give you a homework that you have to do the same thing for convex mirrors. You have to discuss about the formation of image due to reflection of light from convex mirrors. You have to do the same thing, in the same way you can do it. And you will draw the ray diagrams in this way. And in the next day, I will see what is your observation here. If you note the observation here, we can find a very good reciprocity between the position of the image and object. When the object is at F, when the image is at infinity, when the object is at F, the image is at infinity. Yes. When the image is at infinity, object is at F. When the object is beyond 2F, image is between F and F. When the object is between F and F, the image is beyond 2F. This sort of interchange of position of the image and object, that is very clearly object in case of concave mirrors. But in case of convex mirror, I think you are going to get a different result. Let us see, you do it yourself, and in my next class I will ask you. Now, I will have another important result about this sort of spherical mirror. We will see, or what we have done already, we have used it, that whenever we are placing 2F, we are playing it at C, center of curvature. That means probably that we will have a relation between 
Ça faut parler. Religious people so parler. And religious people parler. First of all, let us do it. This is very important for your examination part as well. You will see most of this question is set that for quantum mirror, derive the result A is equal to R by 2. A is equal to R by 2. One condition is there that A will be a paraxial ray. Paraxial ray and the mirror is of small aperture. I think when we can discuss it, you will understand why these conditions are being well. So we are taking a quantum mirror. This is the focus. This is the center of temperature of the mirror. This is the pole of the mirror. Suppose the ray of light, which is paraxial ray. Paraxial means which are very close to the principal axis of the mirror. So after its reflection, it will move to the focus. And we know that at the point the AB is the incident ray, at the point B is incident, so the normal will be passing to the C. Because this is the property of circle, in the theorem of circles we have ready. So BC is the normal. Now, what do we see? Angle ABC is equal to angle CBF. This is clearly from the laws of reflection of light because we know angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. R is equal to R. And what do we see? We can understand as I told you that AB is a ray which is close to the principal axis and it is parallel to the principal axis. This is actually a right. AB parallel to CP and BC is the transversal. BC is the transversal. So we understand angle ABC. is equal to angle BCF. Why I will say angle ABC is equal to angle BCF. This is an application of a property from geometry because these are alternate angles. These are alternate angles. So what we see? This angle is equal to this angle and previously we have obtained this angle is equal to this angle. That is in triangle CBF. In triangle CBF. Angle CBF is equal to angle BCF. So it is an isosceles triangle. Isn't it? When two angles of a triangle happen to be equal, then we can call this triangle to be an isosceles triangle. Actually, isosceles triangle is a triangle whose two sides are equal and we know from property that the two angles which are opposite to the equal sides they will be equal that is this angle CBF is an isosceles triangle and therefore what we shall have is BF is equal to CF BF is equal to CF BF is equal to CF and what I told that this is a paraxial way that is it is actually very close to the Principal axis of the mirror. Here you need the idea of mathematics. Extra you have to think it properly. That is, as AB is a paraxial ray, so the point B is very close. Point B is very close to P. Just think of it. And the mirror is of small aperture, and this, if you think that 
to understand the middle can consider the range here. Then this point B and P are very close. And therefore, after we can approach the line, right, BF is equal to BF is equal to PF. So what we have obtained, or obtained BF is equal to CF. Again, we have got PF is equal to BF. That means we can write BF is equal to PF is equal to CF. That means we can write PF is equal to CF. And what is BF? PF plus CF? PF plus CF is nothing but CP. PF is equal to CF. And PF plus CF is equal to CP. And what is CP? CP is nothing but yes, the radius of curvature of the mirror. It is the radius of curvature of the mirror. That means you can write this is equal to half of CP. That means what we have obtained? PF, PF is nothing but the focal length of the mirror and CP is the radius of curvature. That means we have obtained F is equal to R by 2. F is equal to R by 2. F is equal to F is equal to R by 2. So we have obtained an important result for concave mirror. Similarly, you can do it for convex mirror. Similarly, you can do it for convex mirror. And obviously, take this as your homework. Take this as your homework. For convex mirror, obtain the relation between the focal length of the mirror and radius of curvature. That is F is equal to R by 2. Thank you all. All of you have a good day.